Department of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the Horner syndromes and what causes Horner syndromes and the sign of Horner syndrome. So in my previous video on the pupillary light reflexes and the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve supply of the pupil, I explained in detail the pathway of sympathetic nerve supply to the eye. As we all know that the sympathetic nerve system or the sympathetic nerve supply, it starts from the brain in the hypothalamic center and from the hypothalamic center, these neurons are going to pass through the brain stem without any relaying and they are going to go into the celiospinal center of budge. Now the celiospinal center of budge is actually located in the spinal cord at the level of C8, T1, T2, T3, T4. Till this level, it is called the first order neurons. Now, the neurons are going to pass from the C8, T1, T2, T3, T4 level. That means from the celiospinal center of budge. And now they are going to pass through this sympathetic nerve chain. They are going to pass through the inferior, middle and finally reach the superior cervical ganglion where they are going to relay further. Now, the neurons which are coming from the celiospinal center of budge to the superior cervical ganglion are called the second order neuron. Now, from this superior cervical ganglion, further the neurons are going to pass and they are called the postganglionic neurons. They are going to pass through the cavernous sinus and then finally into the V1 division of the trigeminal ganglion. And through that, they are going to pass through the ophthalmic division and through that, they are going to go to the, uh, to the nasociliary branch and further into the long ciliary nerves. And these long ciliary nerves are the ones which are going to supply the uh, dilated pupillae as well as the superior tarsal muscle. Now this basic anatomy is very very important for us to know and uh, for your revision I would like you to visit my video on pupillary light reflex where, wherein I have explained in detail the parasympathetic and the sympathetic supply of the uh, pupil. So what causes the Horner syndrome? As I told you that there are three different neurons which are starting from the hypothalamus and finally they are ending as the long ciliary nerves to supply the iris dilator and the superior tarsal muscle of the eye. So the first order neuron, as I told you, it will originate from the hypothalamus and then descend into the midbrain and pons uncrossed, terminating into the C8 to T2 level of the spinal cord, which is called the celiospinal center of budge. So this is the first order neuron. Now, there are a lot of conditions which can affect the sympathetic nervous system during its passage through the first order neuron and these are the cerebral vascular accident. So various strokes can affect the hypothalamic center and that will lead to the Horner syndrome. Apart from that, we can have stroke affecting the uh, medullary area and that is called the lateral medullary syndrome. And then there are various other conditions like the demyelinating conditions like multiple sclerosis, which can cause Horner syndrome, Arnold Chiari malformation, which will affect the sympathetic system near the cerebellar area, various infections of the brain like encephalitis, meningitis, then we have the cavitation of the spinal cord which occurs in syringomyelia, various intracranial tumors of the pituitary and the base of the skull from where the sympathetic chains are passing through the brain stem, then spinal trauma which occurs at this level at the level of the spinal center of the budge and various other tumors of the spinal cord. So all these conditions are going to affect the first order neurons of the sympathetic system and then they are going to to cause the Horner syndrome. Now the second order neurons are called the preganglionic neurons because they are present in front or uh, before they reach the superior cervical ganglion where these fibers are going to relay and that's the reason it is called the preganglionic neurons. The preganglionic neurons or the second order neurons they are going to start from the celiospinal center of the budge and then they are going to go up to this part which is called the superior cervical ganglion which is located at the level of C3 and C4 level. So as you can see the sympathetic neurons are actually passing right uh, from this C8, T1, T2 level that is almost present near the neck area and then they're ascending upwards traveling right up to the mandibular area of the patient's face. This picture over here shows you the passage of the cervical uh, sympathetic chain in the neck. So 
our sympathetic supply to the eye is also passing through this chain as i told you they are passing without relay into the inferior cervical ganglion middle cervical ganglion and finally reaching the superior cervical ganglion which is located quite above high in the neck so at all these places you can see it is in very close association with the common carotid the subclavian the very uh, the brachial plexus and uh, with the uh, also with the lungs lungs will be somewhere here so it has a, a very close association with important structures present in the neck and the mediastinum the, and therefore any kind of disease which affects the mediastinum and the lungs or uh, something in the neck can lead to uh, the Horner's syndrome. So what are these uh, conditions which can cause Horner's syndrome by affecting the second order neurons? So these are the malignancies involving the apex of the lungs. So the lungs would be situated somewhere here so any uh, tumor or which is affecting the apex of the lung which is called the pancos tumor can lead to the second order horner syndrome then symptoms of a cervical rib can cause a tractional injury onto these onto this uh, uh, cervical chains of the sympathetic uh, supply to the eye and therefore they can cause horner syndrome similarly the lesions of the subclavian artery any uh, lymphadenopathy present in the mediastinum trauma to the brachial plexus neuroblastoma of these cervical chains okay and any dental abscess which is involving the mandibular region so i told you that the superior cervical ganglion is reaching right up to your mandibular area and therefore any abscess in this mandibular area can also affect the superior cervical ganglion and the preganglionic uh, sympathetic nerve fibers and therefore they can cause the horner syndrome then there are a lot of iatrogenic causes uh, which can cause horner syndrome like thyroidectomy radical neck dissection, tonsillectomy, coronary artery bypass grafting and keratodangiography. So all these conditions are somewhere related in the neck and in the neck we have this preganglionic fibers, the second order neurons which can get affected leading to the Horner syndrome. Coming to the third order neurons or the postganglionic neurons. The third order neurons are going to pass from the superior cervical ganglion and then they're going to come out through this pass through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. Then they are going to go through this trigeminal ganglion, pass through the V1 division, that is the um, ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, and then they're going to enter into this long uh, the nasociliary branch of the V1 division, and through that, through the long ciliary nerve, they're going to supply the iris dilator and the superior tarsal muscle so these fibers again can get affected in some part uh, in uh, some of the disorders leading to horners so what are these uh, disorders which can affect the postganglionic or the third order neuron the postganglionic fibers or the third order neurons can get affected if there's a problem in the carotid that is like the carotid cavernous fistula or if there's any internal carotid artery dissection or an aneurysm even those can uh, cause problem in the sympathetic chains which are present coiled around the carotid and therefore the patient can develop a Horner syndrome then cluster headaches and migraines, readers paratrigeminal syndrome in which we have unilateral facial pain, headache and Horner syndrome, herpes zoster infection which affects the third order neurons, temporal arthritis, all these things can cause uh, the um, development of the postganglionic Horner syndrome. Apart from that, another uh, entity is the CST cavernous sinus thrombosis because we know that the nerves are the sympathetic chain is passing along this internal carotid artery and then passing to the lateral wall. So whenever there's a cavernous sinus thrombosis, that can also affect the sympathetic chain and therefore the patient can develop Horner syndrome. Now, if a patient has a painful Horner syndrome, the two conditions that you might think about is one is a carotid artery dissection and the other one is the cavernous sinus thrombosis. Now, after you know the etiology and what all conditions can affect the first, second and third order neurons leading to the Horner's, you should know what is Horner's syndrome and what are the signs of Horner's syndrome. Now, this will become quite easy after from here onwards. Now, we know that in order to open the eye, uh, open the eye uh, lids, and to keep the eyelids in the upward position, we basically have two muscles. One is a levator papillary superioris and the other one is a superior tarsal muscle which is present near the superior tarsal plate, also called the Muller's muscle. The levator papillary superioris is basically supplied by the third cranial nerve and is majorly responsible for the elevation of the upper eyelid. Whereas for the maintenance of the lid in the elevated position, the muscle which is required is the superior tarsal muscle, also called the Muller's muscle. And this 
this superior tarsal muscle is basically supplied by the sympathetic nerve or the sympathetic system. So whenever there is a Horner syndrome, we know that the sympathetic nerve supply is disrupted and therefore the patient will have partial doses. So what is important over here uh, for you to remember is that the doses that the patient has in Horner syndrome is not as severe as seen in case of a third nerve palsy in which we have almost a total doses whereas in the uh, Horner syndrome what we have is a partial doses. Apart from that the inferior eyelids are also supplied by the sympathetic uh, nerve supply. The inferior uh, eyelid retractors are supplied by the sympathetic system. So whenever there's Horner syndrome, the sympathetic nerve supply to the lower eyelid is also affected and therefore you are going to see an upward movement of these uh, lower eyelid or an upward position of the lower eyelid than the normal uh, position. So normally the lower eyelid is posi uh, positioned just at the limbus. However, in this picture you can see the eyelid is much higher. Okay, the lower eyelid is lower lower lid is much higher and this condition is called uh, inverse ptosis or reverse ptosis which is seen in the Horner syndrome. Now apart from that the second thing that you see is the presence of a meiotic pupil. Now we know that the sympathetic nerve supply was also supplying the dilator pupillae muscles okay so it's responsible for the pupillary dilatation also called the metriasis so whenever this is disrupted what you're going to see is the pupil is going to be much smaller in size compared to the normal pupil so just look at this picture here and look at the pupil here so the pupil on the side where there's Horner syndrome is going to be smaller compared to the normal pupil however this pupil is going to react normally to the light and accommodation because these systems are not supplied the light reflex, the accommodation reflex has nothing to do with the sympathetic nerve supply and therefore the patient's light reflex and accommodation reflex will be normal. However, the pupil will be meiotic. Apart from that, what we have is loss of sweating on one side of the face. As I told you that the third order neurons are basically supplying this um, eye and apart from that, they're also supplying the half of the face uh, going to the sweat glands. So whenever there is the first order neuron lesions, it is going to affect almost the half side of the body. The patient will have anhydrosis that is decreased sweating in entire half side of the body and uh, this is this is what happens when the first order neurons are going to get affected in case of second order neurons half of the face is going to be affected so it's called the ipsilateral face and hydrosis however when you go to the post ganglionic third order lesion what happens is that most of the vasomotor and pseudomotor fibers have already branched off by this level and therefore the type of anhydrosis that you see in the third order post ganglionic lesion is quite less and the, the anhydrosis is present just in an area adjacent to the ipsilateral brow. So that is about the anhydrosis. Now another feature that you can see is the presence of heterochromia. However, this is a feature which is seen only in the congenital form of Horner syndrome in children who are younger than two years. So what is a triad of Horner syndrome? Horner syndrome is basically going to present to you with the drooping of the eyelid which is called ptosis. However, this ptosis is only a partial ptosis compared to the ptosis that you see in third nerve palsy which is a complete ptosis. Now moreover, you can also see an upward pulling of the lower lid which is called an inverse ptosis or a reverse ptosis. Coming to the meiosis, the pupil is often constricted in case of Horner syndrome because the sympathetic supply to the dilator pupillae is affected and therefore you are going to see a constricted pupil. However, this pupil is going to still react to light and accommodation as the light reflex and the accommodation reflex has nothing to do with the sympathetic nerve supply. Apart from that, patient can have decreased sweating on one side of the body. If it is the first order Horner syndrome, it, he can have decreased sweating on the half side of the face if it is second order Horner syndrome and he can have decreased swelling in a very limited area somewhere near the brow or the eyebrow and that is called the third order Horner syndrome. So I hope Horner syndrome is clear for you now. Thank you and have a nice day.